First, you will recall just a moment ago that I said the hip flexors always work alone. So if we look at the image on the left, we see that her left hip is being flexed, creating a clockwise torque shown all by itself in yellow. And if we look at the image on the right, we see that her right hip is being flexed, creating a counterclockwise torque all by itself shown in red. So knowing the hip flexors always work alone is something you have to remember. And I'll write this down below here. And for those who may be new to this terminology regarding the hip flexors, hip flexion means the same thing as thigh flexion. So if you can simply spot which thigh is being flexed upward in the air, then you have also identified which hip is in flexion. And I know for me, it's much easier to key in on the movement of the entire thigh rather than trying to figure out what is taking place deep inside the hip joint itself. So because of that, I'm going to add the word thigh to our statement here, since I know that'll make it much easier for some of you to pick up on. Okay, second, you will also recall a short while back that I said the torque from the legs doesn't change direction. And let me write that down below here. Now, more specifically, the right leg always produces a counterclockwise torque, regardless if it is pushing from behind, seen here on the left, or pulling from the front, seen here on the right. And I'll write that down below. And the left leg always produces a clockwise torque, regardless if it is pulling from the front for the image on the left, or pushing from behind for the image on the right. And I'll write that down below. This too is something you have to remember and a really easy way of keeping track of which direction each leg is going is to know that the word counterclockwise and the word right both have the letter R in them, which to me is my clue that the right leg produces a counterclockwise torque. So as long as I can remember that the word counterclockwise has the letter R in it, then I will know that the right leg will always produce a counterclockwise torque regardless of its position. And the left one, regardless of its position, will by default produce the clockwise torque. So these are the only two pieces of information I need to be able to figure out someone's torque pattern. And so what I will do with this information is first identify the hip inflection, then I will determine its direction based on whether it's the right leg or left, and then I will know that everything else is going the other way. So let's apply these three steps to the images already on the screen before moving on to the others I have planned for you so you can see how easy this really is. Now for the image on the left, step one says to first identify the hip or thigh that is in flexion. And so I see that it is the left hip. Step two says to determine its direction. And I see where the left leg always produces a clockwise torque. So I see it doing just that all by itself in yellow. And now I know that everything else, step three, is going the other way, which is counterclockwise in red. Now, doing the same with the image on the right, again, I want to first identify the hip or thigh that is in flexion. And I see it's the right hip. Step two says to determine its direction. And I know the right leg always produces a counterclockwise torque. And I see it doing just that, all by itself in red. And now I know that everything else, step three, is going the other way, which is clockwise in yellow. Now, don't worry if this is still taking a little while to figure out. We are going to get plenty of practice next when we apply these three steps to some really good athletes. And by the time we're finished, you will be an expert at identifying each of these torque patterns. All right, that's going to do it for this video. You can access the link to the next part in this series, as well as all 12 parts in the description below. Now, before I go, I want to say that if you liked my video, then please click the like button. Feel free to share it wherever you want and leave me a question or comment as I'll be sure to get to it as soon as possible. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and follow Athletic Quickness on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to stay up to date on all of our speed training tips, articles, and exercises. Okay, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.